then, ladies and gentlemen, the Blue Hedgehog 2010 returns you with episode 2 of Let's Play Star Fox Adventures for Nintendo GameCube. In the last episode, we just got introduced to the female uh, protagonist of the game, somewhat, Crystal. We just went into Crystal Palace, we met up with General Scales, and we're about to see what this Earthwalker fellow is going to tell us. <laughs> Keo Krisoa, Doot Uwe Kutsok, Keo Uhu Dootwo. Nos ag Uwe Keo Krot Keo Tashkof Shoduk. Neo no no ho Ukusbot, a shotu cut for Kutsok. No no ho, much a shot. Oh. Rek Neo no ho Uwe Tedwo Kutsoho. Kill King Earthwalker shot its game. He cast Kiaz Shushat Fusuzo. Could see Mo Eve Kale Krizoa. Kale Krizoa, Oho Fuzo Fahaks. Fenovic Rodu, Kale Grado Kavo K, O Kudak. Naki Kale Fahaks, a Kudak Ash too. Ad <laughs> Of Uwe Jesut, Kiot Hokit K Mo I'm Dick Witwo Utun Kotso. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, we get introduced to the first Krozoa Palace type test thing here. Uh, this is a casino um Casino. <laughs> I felt like a dumbass. Krizoa Shrine Entrance. Whenever you run into entrances such as this, you are about to enter the Krizoa Shrine to take one of their one out of six tests in the entire game. Yes, there are a total of six Krizoa spirits in this game. You have found your way to Krizoa Shrine. Within lies the Krizoa Spirit. The spirits have been hidden as they hold great powers. Power that, if in the wrong hands, could bring terror. But in the right hands, the spirits can bring peace. There are six spirits to find and return to the Krizoa Palace. If you can find the spirit within the shrine and complete its test, then it will be yours. Yeah, this will, every time you enter this shrine, it will pretty much, I think it will keep saying that to you regardless, but just thought I'd read the first one out. But this first test isn't so bad. Uh, you got your basic obstacles here, you got flames to dodge, you got this enemy you need to watch out for. Um, if you see that red gate, re uh, get, get blah, I cannot speak today, gateway over there, you will notice that this is a life force door. The spirits floating on it tell you how many bad guys you must defeat before the door will open. Yeah, I was just about to explain that, so thank you, game, for explaining that. Pretty much this one over here in this pit counts as an enemy. Um... I guess I haven't really explained this. Oh man, I haven't really explained this um, whole game. But Star Fox Adventures, this game was developed by Rare, and this was actually their last game before they um, sold themselves to Microsoft. Um, what their intentions was of selling themselves to Microsoft, I have really no idea. But. No, I think I need to bring a bomb over there, but um, it was kind of a wrong move on their part, I believe, because I mean, this is probably one of the best rare games I've ever played, and probably, oh, Jesus, yeah, you have to be pretty precise to place the bombs in there, you have to wait until that A button um, on the top 
left corner, oh no, right corner of the screen, it'll say put down. You just put that down. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's probably one of the best games ever made. And, you know, I hate to say, but, I mean, Rare did a wrong move on selling themselves to, um, Microsoft, at least in my opinion. But this first test cont is test of observation. Pretty much, you have to keep an eye on which urn the Krizoa spirit is in, and you will, you know, pretty much do that. You can find him if you keep a close eye on him. You have to find him at least three times. This is their second time. Just keep an eye on the urn until, uh. Well, the, the urn that the Krizoa spirit is in until the urn stops um, turning, and you will find the Krizoa spirit. But yeah, how I got into this game was, uh, like I mentioned in the last episode, we got this game in the Christmas in the year 2003. Um, Jimmy was more interested in getting this game, but it turned out that this game was everyone's, and <laughs> Jimmy wasn't quite happy with that, so I mean, we decided, you know, we'll just give the game to the poor guy, because I mean, he really wanted this game, like, very badly. Like, I don't even think he's played Star Fox 64 or Star Fox for your Super Nintendo, but after playing the character of Fox McCloud, um, on Super Smash Bros. Melee? <laughs> oh boy, did he want that game. But yeah, after every single test um, you complete, the Krizoa spirit will possess your body and you will be able to take it back to Krizoa Shrine. <laughs> And by shrine, I meant Krizoa Palace. But this is an easy one to get rid of. All you have to do is just go up onto this elevator, run down this hallway, turn to your right, and you'll be able to place your first Krizoa spirit in there. Who's, who's that? Who could that be stalking Crystal? Slippy. Hey! Slippy, 
It's General Pepper. General Pepper here. I have a new mission for you, Fox. You are approaching Dinosaur Planet, an ancient world on the edge of the Lilac system. As you will see, chunks of the planet have been torn from its surface. It's your job to get them back. If Dinosaur Planet explodes, it could affect the entire Lilac system. The only lead we have is that you must locate the Queen of the Earthwalker Dinosaur Tribe. Maybe she can help you further. Either way, your fee has been approved. If you are successful, then the money will be forwarded to you immediately. Pepper out! You heard the general. Let's do it! And from there, ladies and gentlemen, as you see, we saw Star Fox, we saw Peppy, we saw Slippy, and General Pepper. But what happened to Falco? Well, you won't be able to find that out unless you read the instruction booklet in this Nintendo GameCube pamphlet, and it lists is right here. <clears throat> Eight years have passed since Andros was finally overthrown by the daring Star Fox team. Following the celebrations, Fox McCloud and friends returned to the only life they knew, an endless patrol of the Lilat system, guarding against ongoing threats to their territory. Boredom soon struck, causing Fox's close friend, Falco Lombardi, to simply disappear, leaving only rumor to suggest that this uh, blah, his lone wolf nature, had finally led him to pursue a more free and profitable life. Then Slippy Toe trade his pilot's wings for a place in weapons R&D, demonstrating a natural flair for invention, while Fox's old friend and mentor, Peppy Hare, retired from active flight duty to concentrate on a role of, as nav uh, navigator and general advisor. The Great Fox itself had also be seen better days. Keeping a ship of that size in prime condition cost serious money, and well-paid jobs and for fighter pilots and mercenaries were increasingly difficult to come by. Excuse me. So it was that Fox and Co. found themselves drifting through to the galaxy, waiting and hoping for General Pepper's hologram to pop up with just the kind of high-stakes, high-reward mission that they needed. And indeed, we have that mission, and that is to go to Dinosaur Planet. But we will not venture there <laughs> in this episode, because we are at 12 minutes already, and this is probably going to be the best um, place to stop at, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, because um, during each planet, you will have to go through a nostalgia trip of Star Fox 64 days and collecting as many rings as you can to open the force field to get to that planet successfully. And, you know, that takes a little bit of time. Plus, there is a long cutscene that comes after it. So, I'm not even going to bother anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the next episode, we will venture to Dinosaur Planet to see what is going on with the Thorntail tribe. What's the Queen Earthwalker's condition? Why? Just, just why, in all general. <laughs> so, until next episode, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Blue Hedgehog 2010. I hope you're all having a wonderful day.